Senator Ted Cruz uh, joins us now from the great state of Texas. How weird of a world do you think it is that we live in right now? I mean, just off the bat, this is just as peculiar as we get. Bizarre. I got to say, Tony, I got to have a little bit of fun with you. It, it, the radio business is, is really fun. So we're sitting here, we're like high five and are doing fist bumps. And then you sit down and there's something about radio voice where your voice drops an octave and it's Senator Ted Cruz is here. And it's oh, really God. cool. It, you have it, a it lot is. of faith in my ability to do I don't have a, a radio voice. I, I thought it was strong. It, right? it, it was it was this baritone. But did it move you? Oh, it was. Oh, I, I was damn. already like, you know, I, I moved the senator. There we go. <laughs> We're done. You, you can move on to the next one. Uh, there are a couple questions, CPAC related yeah. and conservatism related, I want to get to. But we got to start with the airstrikes in Syria. These targets that were Iranian backed, uh, uh, financed by the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, meaning financed by the mullahs, the hardliners, the clerics. 36 days into the Biden administration, we we're already in a bombing raid, yeah. as many discussing it. Uh, did this raid make sense to you? Did this attack, have, were you briefed on it at all? So we were not briefed on it. Uh, the short answer is I don't know. So I've seen the headlines. I'll, I'll be back in D.C. on Monday. And so hopefully we will receive a briefing in terms of what assets they hit, why they why they hit it, what the provocation was. Uh, you know, look, I will note under Barack Obama, uh, I think we were far too eager to get into military conflict. I think Barack Obama wanted to bring us into war in Syria. That was a mistake. I opposed it at the time. Uh, Barack Obama did bring us into war in Libya, toppled Gaddafi, and that was a mistake. It ended up handing Libya over to radical Islamic terrorists who want to kill us. Uh, and so I believe the test for U.S. military involvement should be defending the vital national security interest of the United States. That's the only test. And what's bizarre, it was certainly true about Obama-Biden, we'll see if it's true about Joe Biden alone, is that they simultaneously want to embrace and give hundreds of billions of dollars to the Ayatollah Khamenei in Iran who chants death to America and wants to murder you and murder me, while at the same time being eager to engage in foreign adventurism for individuals that don't pose a threat to America. I think that's exactly backwards. We ought to be prepared to defend this country, but not uh, not too eager to send our sons and daughters into harm's way. Does it strike you as hypocritical or as part of foreign policy that you would engage this bombing while also getting back in the Iran nuclear deal? It's misguided priorities. It is. Look, to be fair, I don't want to prejudge what this bombing was because I have not heard the specifics okay. of the classified intel. It may be that this was a, a justified and important step. I want to give the president, the administration, the opportunity to make that case. And as commander in chief, he deserves the opportunity to make that case. Uh, but uh, they certainly haven't made that case publicly or to members of Congress yet. And what has been clear from every one of their nominees is their number one foreign policy objective is getting back in the catastrophic Iran nuclear deal and sending billions of dollars to the Ayatollah Khamenei. That makes no sense and it's dangerous. Things that I consider dangerous, you might agree, you might disagree, talking to Senator Ted Cruz here at CPAC, the Conservative Political Action Conference, is the Equality Act that just passed the yeah. House, uh, which has a questionable future in the Senate. The argument that people will make on the Equality Act is that it is a codification or, or an increase in the 1964 Civil Rights Act, and it's going to protect people regarding their sexual identity, gender identity, etc. If you're a girl who plays high school sports or college athletics or, or, or other, it means that you may be working in a very unfair play, uh, world where men or boys who decide they are girls or women can then compete against you. Where is the Equality Act in the Senate? And do you think this is misguided policy? Uh, it, it is certainly misguided policy. It is not going to pass the Senate, I do not believe. Uh, so long as the Democrats don't destroy the filibuster rule, this won't pass. So if, it's possible. I, look, they could end the filibuster rule. I think there's right. enormous pressure. We are right now counting on Joe Manchin, uh, Democrat out of West Virginia, to hold the line against Chuck Schumer. If Manchin caves, and by the way, I, I've wondered if Schumer has in his office thumb screws and a medieval rack, because very few Democrats ever seem to want to cross him. But if Schumer, if, if Manchin caves and they end the filibuster, then the Equality Act could pass. And, and it's important to understand, number one, it's a great name. Right. You, you, you know, They're you know, very good at naming. I, I mean, Equality, how about the Justice Act, the, the, the Warm Before Fuzzy the Kitten Act? Act. I, I mean, you know, 
today's left is a religion. It is a religion where their LGBT agenda is a religion, where radical environmentalism is a religion. And if you look at what the Equality Act is about, it's about destroying every other religion. It's about saying to your local pastor, if you teach what the Bible says about sexuality, the government will come against you. It's about telling the local Christian school or Jewish school or Muslim school that if you refuse to embrace the radical LGBT agenda, your school will be shut down. Your synagogue will be closed. You will be fined. You will be punished. And this is not about liberty. Listen, when it comes to sex, I, I'm very libertarian. I believe consenting adults ought to be able to do pretty much anything they want. That's, that, that is our fundamental liberty. But this act is not about liberty. Nobody is constraining your right to do whatever you want in the bedroom. Right. This is about saying to pastors and, and rabbis and, and imams, you can't preach your faith, and if you dare disagree, you must celebrate what somebody else chooses in, in the bedroom. And if you disagree, if you instead preach Scripture, you will be punished, you will be fined, you will be closed, you will be shut down. This is cancel culture is what this bill is about. Before I let you go, because you're a busy man, you're very popular here, sir. You know that, right? It's a great people. You know? C oh, CPAC is the fine people. I, I also give everyone standing here 20 bucks. Is that right? It, 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 it amazes. Shame it, on me for sitting it, down. It, it works very well. This event, this moment, President Trump coming to speak uh, on Sunday, the idea that the Republican Party is in the middle of, of a civil war, uh, the, the, the Liz Cheney uh, view, uh, the view. Wow, that's a, that's a head shake right there. You see, that doesn't work well on radio. But man, that was world class. Um, is the Republican Party in a civil war? And how is the party right to be embracing President Trump? And then I've got to follow yeah. up on that. So I hope not. Uh, I'm worried about it. I think the media wants us to be in a civil war. And I do think there are some dynamics pushing us that, that way. You know, last year I launched a podcast, Verdict with Ted Cruz. Right. Uh, became the I've number never been invited on it. I, well, you, you know, w we can take this segment and put it on Verdict. Hot diggity. <laughs> um, the last verdict we did, we did actually down in Florida, in Miami, at the YAF concert, uh, YAF convention. And somebody asked me this question. One of the students asked me this question. Said, "said Look, should we, should people who are critics of Trump, be purged from the party?" And and the answer I gave, I said, "Listen, I'm not a fan of purges. I'm not a fan of purges. There are some." who want to go after every Trump supporter and purge them from the party. There are others who want to go after every person who criticized Trump and purge them from the party. I'm interested in winning. Right. And the way you win is you get to 50 plus one. And you don't get to 50 plus one by cutting big chunks of your party out. And so listen, for everyone who's saying they want Donald Trump to go away, I got news for you. He ain't going away. <laughs> He's going to say what he thinks. It's his right to say what he thinks, and I'm glad that he will continue saying what he thinks. But, but this idea that we're going to suddenly have purity tests and, and, and start burning people at the stake if, if they don't conform to us, you know what that's sounding like? That's sounding like the left. That's what they do. I want a coalition of people who love liberty. If you're a conservative, if you're a libertarian, if you believe in the Constitution and Bill of Rights, I want you with us because we're fighting for the freedom and the prosperity and the jobs and the future of our country. And that takes a big coalition to get there. Before I let you go, something I'm going to share on my podcast. I do a podcast about bourbon and cigars as well. I review them 60 stations across the country. You once lit a cigar with a Bic. It was... Uh, embarrassing. It, it was sir, shameful. It was shameful and embarrassing. It was a Shonda, uh, is is what it was. I, I, according I have to my no grandmother. defense. I have no defense. This I, is, I plead utterly and completely guilty. This is an Arturo Fuente eight five eight. Get yourself a torch, or allow me to enjoy that with you one day. Do it right for us, for America. It, it, let me thank you. <laughs> let me confess even more. So that was. I was doing it to point out the abominable spending bill we had, and I came up with the idea, all right, give me a cigar, let me light it. I have a torch at home. Okay. I have a humidor at home. Okay. Uh, 
I'm breathing look, easy. Look, I never like people in politics who throw their staff overboard, but I'm about to throw my staff overboard. Oh, this is great. So, so I was like, all right, get me a cigar. Number one, they got me a cigar that was so dried out. Oh, okay. It was crumbling. And I don't know, I think they went to like a local 7-Eleven and said, give me your oldest Swisher sweet in the back. And, and that's what I ended up with. And then to light it, they had this stupid bic that right. they gave me. And the problem was we're getting ready to film it. I'm like, fine. And, and so, and even worse, if you look at it, so I'm trying to light it, but the cigar was in such bad shape. It didn't light. It didn't light. So I'm sitting there sucking on just this dead cigar. And, and it ends by crushing it into the into the bill, which was the best thing to do with that cigar. That cigar was not in smoking condition. <laughs> but 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 I did, and, and the problem is I only had one cigar, so I had to do one take. I couldn't actually, once I started it, like if I stopped, okay, right. you're out of luck, so I just had to finish it. But I did tell them afterwards, I said, okay, you're going to get my Cuban-American heritage revoked. Oh, like, oh I'm, clearly. I, I'm like, 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 as a Cuban, i got to be able to smoke a damn cigar. Right. So, so I, I apologize uh, for for that 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 truly shameful display. Uh, I, I, I it is accepted. Uh, I, I appreciate it. If you want us to come out, eat, drink, smoke, we'll outfit your office is with everything you could ever want. We'll, we'll, we'll do it for every senator who supports uh, the cigar industry and keeps the FDA from regulating cigars like cigarettes. We'd be thrilled to do it. Just ask. By the way, there is no better way to play poker than with a cigar in your mouth because as you're clenching a cigar and you're calling someone's bluff to say you don't have the cards damn it i know you don't have it and i'm going to take every chip in front of you you play some angry poker oh well, you are a senator it, it, it is just better <laughs> senator ted cruz i appreciate you taking the time sir thank you man oh i keep forget i keep going for the handshake we, he did not shake my hand he didn't there was no open palm <laughs> nothing <laughs> senator ted cruz everybody give him a hand <laughs> <laughs>